What is going on guys? Hope everyone out there is having an awesome day. We are back inside the garden and today we're going to do another question and answer. It's been a while. Some people have been asking about them. I'm about to harvest the autoflower garden but I thought I'd hop on here and do a little question and answer. Get some of these knocked off because I got quite a bit of questions here so and before we get into it, make sure you go over to my Mush Lovin' channel and check out my uh, new podcast video we did. We did a big mushroom podcast a little while back, so definitely go check that out. I'll put links down below. Also remember to smash that like button and leave a comment on these videos. Really helps the algorithm. If you want to be featured in the next episode of the Question and Answers, just put it down below. And also if you need some new LED grow lights, I can hook you up with Optic LED discount codes. You can message me at Dr. Autoflower LED at gmail.com or at Dr. R Flower on Instagram. I can help you choose which uh, light is best for your growth situation and which light to go with. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the questions and answers. So we're gonna start off with this one from Eduardo Martinez. It says, grow without fear of any mistakes, just have fun, and that's the way you will learn and get better. 100% agree with that. It's not a question, but I wanted to have that in here because that is 100% what I believe. Uh, don't worry about it like it's it's all a learning curve um, The more you grow the better you'll get at it The more you'll be able to read the plants in the beginning It's really alien like you can't really read the plants or understand what's really happening But after you get a few grows in, you start really starting to read the plants and seeing you know signs where like oh Well now I need to water it's starting to wilt. Oh, I need to feed this or I need to give some cow mag or something like that It's just like they say practice makes perfect and I 100% agree with that with growing, autoflowers, photo periods. It's all a journey of learning, so don't worry if you mess up. Here's a comment from the Shiznit. Uh, for the first time and second time, I did a run 18 hours on and 6 hours off. This time, I did 20 hours on, uh, 4 hours off. And I have to say that I can't tell the difference with my eyes. Next time, clearly, I'm going to do 18 and 6 off. Um, so I pretty much agree with that. I don't really see uh, that big of a difference at all um, to using uh, 20 hours on, 4 hours off, or going 18 hours on, 6 off. Um, that's pretty much what I go with um, in the summer times. In the winter times when it's kind of better to have some lights going to keep the temperature stable in the room, uh, I don't mind running at 20 hours. Give it some extra light and heat in the room. Um, so that's kind of how I see it. I grow to my advantage of what season I'm in. Tony Parson says, I have a question. Are photo periods more potent than autoflowers? Also, how sensitive are photo periods to light leaks? I would say if you want the strongest, strongest strain, it's most likely going to be a photo period. Uh, are autoflowers very close? Yes, they're very close. They're pretty much indistinguishable now. Um, to the point where, you know, a lot of them are over probably 20% THC and that's normally what you find. Like most dank autoflowers are probably going to be over 20% and they're going to be pretty strong. And I've seen some get up to like 26, 27 I think. So they're very close now, like they're, they're very strong. And if you were just smoking with some random person and they didn't even know, they, there would be no way to tell if it was an autoflower. But yeah, it's so similar now that I really wouldn't worry about it. Stick with some fire genetics and you will have a good grow and some good smoke. And on the other question about the photo periods, yes, they are definitely more susceptible to light leaks. Uh, if you have light leaks in your room, you could have Hermes. Uh, you could have uh, messed up flower times. You can really stress the plant out. For autoflowers, you can leave the doors open if you wanted. Uh, you could have it in a closet where it's not light proof. Uh, it's a lot more versatile, especially if you want to grow it in a area that is not, you know, light proof. And for like my autoflower grows, I leave my door open a crack pretty much all the time. So there is always probably light leaks coming in, but it never affects them. So yes, you definitely want to make sure your photo periods are in a light proof area and they're getting complete darkness. Cody Cunningham says, going to be following your feeding schedule with advanced nutrients Sensi Bloom next auto run. Are you feeding every water during a given 10 day period? Also, are you using Promix HP? Yes, I'm using Promix HP. I pretty much use it every grow. And also the uh, feeding times or schedules is pretty much every time they, you know, need watering. So the first 10 days you don't feed them anything and then you start feeding them after that. And because the schedule I use is uh, smaller amounts of feeding, 
you can feed every single time, which keeps the pH perfect and there's never fluctuations. And also they're always getting enough food, but they're also not getting too much food. Greg Nelson says, hey doc, can you tell me what medium do you use? Uh, Promix HP. It's pretty much the easiest uh, grow mix I can find around me, so that's what I go with. Always get great results, so I can't complain. Uh, I do wish I had some really high quality cocoa around because I would like to probably mix a third into my mix. So I have a third cocoa, a third Pro Mix HB. If you get some high quality cocoa, that is a really good mix. Um, but right now, Pro Mix HP is what I go with. Little Eden Valley Farm says, do you do any outdoor grows? Um, I have done in the past. I live in an area where I'm pretty far north and uh, if it's not getting like really good sunlight all the time, like as much as possible, then it's probably not gonna finish off. Um, but I may try it uh, here in the future. Just a couple plants, just see how it grows. In the past I've done grows directly into the soil. Um, I found a place kind of in the woods that was kind of shaded too much, but it was a really nice secluded area, uh, really nice, good soil. I dug it up. The best uh, thing to do with autoflowers if you're gonna plant it in the soil is, is you dig it up make make a big hole and then you take your shovel and you smash it down and chop up all that hard dirt because if you get that dirt if you get that soil nice and fluffy it really makes it easy for those roots to penetrate down and they got massive i got autoflowers that went up to five feet tall so they got pretty damn big easily the biggest autoflowers i've ever grown they didn't finish because they weren't getting enough sunlight it was really rainy that year and it just didn't turn out because the end of growing season for me is probably about mid-September, early September. And that's a pretty short season, um, so if it's not perfect, a lot of sun up here, it's not going to finish good. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try in the, the future. Um, but if you do that uh, whole digging technique, uh, if you get some really nice fluffy soil that the roots can penetrate easily through, autoflowers absolutely love that and uh, they will get nice and big. Mike Banks asks, have you ever had the light as close to the roof as you can and run 75% up until transition and then jump to 100%? No, I don't do that. Um, I pretty much avoid doing that. I don't really like to run my lights at full power. I see it as you should only do it if you really have to. Your lights will last longer if you don't do that. If, if you run it at lesser power, uh, closer to your plants, um, it just, it, it's better for the light. It's less power, less heat going through those LED chips. Um, but also, if the par is the same, the par is the same, right? Like, if you're getting the same par as putting it high up and turning it, the power up, compared to having it lower with the power lower, then you're pretty much wasting uh, power. As long as the par is going far enough down the canopy, if the par is going like the same amount, and there's no benefit really, then I, I don't see any point to do that. That's why I really like bar style lights now because you can have them closer and you don't have to worry about uh, the, the light spread being affected. Like my Slim 650S or my Slim 600H, uh, they have both amazing light spread and you can get them pretty damn close. You can get them probably 12 inches away and you're not gonna have really any effect on the light spread because the lights cover the area so well that it's just a non-issue. So I don't do that. You can run it however you like if you wanna do it that way. Some people like to do that. They like to have it higher up or maybe you're in a bigger grow area where having it higher up will help spread the light even out more. So that can also be a benefit. But for me, I'm all about keeping the heat down, uh, keeping my uh, health of my light going good and also keeping my energy build down. 25 Patman asks, if I want to grow autoflowers outdoors, what should the pot size be? Uh, I would say as big as you can get, uh, the bigger the better. So if you want to go like 10 or 20 gallons, you can get some decent sized autoflowers out of that. Because outside, it seems like your plants kind of have a longer veg. I'm not sure why. Um, especially in my area, they just didn't seem to flower that fast. It seemed to have stunted the, the flowering times but it didn't stunt the growth. So they just kept growing and growing um, and they got bigger and bigger. They just didn't flower that fast. So that's why I think having a bigger pot outside is pretty much better. So I, I wouldn't go with smaller because then you'd always have to be watering it all the time. 
bigger pots will actually hold the water for a few days once they start getting bigger and once it starts getting hotter out. M Luz 1289 asks, at what point in Autoflower's life do you give them the full 100% power? This is something I do not go by. I do not go by power levels and I don't go by heights. To me it's almost like uh, guessing how much nutrients you're giving your plants. It's just not a calculation that is should be used, I, I don't think. You should be going how much par you're giving your plants. Uh, what are your par levels? This is why I think everyone should invest in a par meter or a lux meter. Uh, you can search lux to par on YouTube and it comes up with a bunch of searches how to buy a $30, $40 lux meter and how to read par. Or you can get an app. There's apps that do it pretty good. If you have an iPhone, it's probably better and more accurate and stuff. But uh, there is cheap ways to read your par levels and that's how you determine how much power you give your plants. Because everyone can have different heights and different power levels because a lot of lights now are dimmable. Um, so it matters what par levels your canopies are getting. Are you giving too much? Are you giving too little? Are you frying your plants if you're giving too much? But yeah, I would highly recommend stop using power levels and start using par levels and checking your par levels and making sure you're getting the proper power or if you need to give less uh, because there is because you can give too much light and you can fry your plants it is something a lot of people do sometimes Randy McDonald asks uh, can you let me know what was the very first light you grew with and uh, maybe tell us a little about your autoflower experience or experience with autoflowers um, so the very first light I started growing with was actually a 1000 watt HPS uh, which was a friend of mine's who let me grow at his place. Uh, he had a basement set up all ready to go, just a light in a room. And uh, I said, hey, can I grow? He said, sure, go for it. I really didn't even know what light it was at first. Um, and I probably had it too close and I messed up a lot. Um, I didn't even realize it was a thousand watts, which, which is really powerful. But yeah, I was one of the people that started with HPS back in the day. I think it's almost been 15, 16 years since my first grow. Um, but yeah, for the first while, first few years, I was using HPS. I did switch over to 400 watt HPSs uh, back in the day as my first grow lights. I grew with those a few times, had some really, really good autoflower runs with them. Uh, but it was a bit too much heat. I didn't like the heat and dealing with the ballast and stuff. Just too much heat and not as efficient. And I actually used to like really not like LEDs back in the day. Um, 10, 12 years ago, I saw them as like a gimmick and really a waste of money because they used to be very expensive for really small LEDs that did not really produce much at all. Uh, now it's a completely different ball game. And like I said earlier, the first plants I ever grew were autoflowers and I didn't even know it. They were actually autoflowers probably mixed with something um, because they weren't fully autoflowers. Uh, they weren't fully going into flower, it seemed like. They were flowering, but it looked like they were super far behind compared to what autoflowers normally do. Um, so once I finally flipped it to 12 and 12, it did flower more. But they were 100% flowering before I switched. So that's how I determined they were autoflowers. Um, and from then on, I ordered my first uh, few strains up. And from there, I grew some of the stickiest, uh, dankest buds I've had. Uh, so I was pretty much hooked on growing. I absolutely loved it. I saw that I could grow better quality than a lot of the stuff I could get around here. So I really enjoyed it. And like I said before, I absorbed as much knowledge as I could. And I thought as a gift to the universe, all this knowledge that I got from the internet, I'm going to give it back. And it's been a wild ride ever since. I've been able to change this into my career and I absolutely love it. It's, uh, I get to grow and teach people about growing and, uh, and spread as much knowledge as I can and uh, inspire other people to inspire other people. And uh, the more people who are getting into this, the bigger the, the movement will be. And that's how we got it legalized in a lot of places because we were able to change the minds of so many people. And uh, yeah, so I think that's how we, we should do it. But I think that is it for the questions and answers in this episode, guys. Um, thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button. Really appreciate it. Leave a comment or a question if you want to be featured in the next episode. Uh, make sure you check out my links to the Much Lovin' channel. Uh, check out that podcast we did. It's a pretty decent one. 
um, and we're gonna be putting some more content up there too uh, we're gonna have some uh, vlogs coming up here soon I'm pretty pumped for that now that it's spring I kind of want to get out there do some vlogs showing off life as you know a regular grower medical patient and uh, just show something a little different outside the garden. So that'll be fun. Uh, so thank you all for watching. And until next time, guys, peace out. Catch you guys later. Hope your gardens are doing awesome. Stay safe. Peace out. Stay stony.